maybe I'm worried. Rick Duggar conjectured that what's happened to Dave will happen to me. Andy is smart enough to lose her hand, could probably take me too. But that doesn't seem to be it. I see you brought the poop sheet, that new brain unit, Inspector Bryant said, hanging up his fit phone. Rick said, yeah, I heard about it on the grapevine. How many Andes are involved, and how did, and how far did Kate do you get? Eight to start with, Brian said, consulting his clipboard. They've got the first two. And the remaining six are here in Northern California. As far as we know, Dave thinks so. That was him I was talking to. I have his notes. They were... They were in his desk. He says all he knows is there. Brian tapped the bundle of notepaper. So far he didn't seem inclined to pass the notes on to Rick. For some reason he continued to leaf through them himself, frowning and working his tongue in and around the fringes of his mouth. Nothing on my agenda, Rick offered. I'm ready to take over in Dave's place. Brian said thoughtfully. Dave used the void comp alter skill, altered skill in testing out the individuals he suspected. You realize you ought to, anyhow. But this test isn't specific for the new brain units. No test is. The void scale altered three years ago by Kong. That's all we have. He paused, wondering. Dave considered it accurate. Maybe it is. But I would suggest this before you take it out after these six. Again, he tapped the, the, pile, tapped the pile of notes. Fly to Seattle and talk to the Rosen people. <coughs> have them supply. A representative sampling types under the Nexus 6 units. I put them through the Void Comp. Rick said. It sounds so easy. Brian said half to himself. Pardon? Brian said. I think I'll talk to the Rosen or Rosen organization myself while you're on your way. He eyed Rick then, silently. Finally he grunted. Not a fingernail. Not on a fingernail. And eventually decided on what he wanted to say. I'm going to discuss with them the possibility of including several humans, as well as there are new androids. But you don't know. It will be my decision. In conjunction with the manufacturers, it should be set up by the time you get there. Abruptly pointing at Rick, his face severe. This is the first time you'll be acting as senior bounty hunter. Dave knows a lot. He's got years of experience behind him. So have I, Rick said tensely. You've handled assignments don't belong to you from Dave's schedule. He's always decided exactly which ones to turn over to you and which not to. But now you've got six that he intended to retire himself, one of which has managed to get him first. This one. Brian turned the notes so that Rick could see. Max Polkov. Brian said, that's what it calls himself anyhow. Assuming Dave was right, everything is based on that assumption, this entire list. And yet the point comp altered scale has only been administered to the first three. The two Dave retired and then Polakoff. It was while Dave was administering the test that was when Polakoff lasered him. Which proves that Dave was right, Rick said. Otherwise he would not have been lasered. Polakoff would have no motive. You get started you get started for Seattle. Brian said. Don't tell them for 
first I'll handle it. Listen. He rose to his feet, so that they confronted Rick. When you run the front comp scale up there, if one of the humans fails to pass it, that can't happen. Rick said it. One day a few years ago, I talked to Dave. I talked with David about exactly that. He'd been thinking along the same lines. I had a memo from the Soviet police, WPO itself, circulated through Earth. Circulated through Earth plus the colonies. A group of psychiatrists in Leningrad have approached WPO with the following proposition. They want the latest and most accurate personality profile and medical tools used in determining the presence of an android. In other words, the white cop scale applied to a carefully selected group of schizoid and schizophrenic human patients. Those specifically which reveal what's called a flattening of effect. You've heard of that. Rick said. That's specifically what the scale measures. Then you understand what they're worried about. <coughs> this problem has always existed. Since we first encountered androids as humans, and it was poisoning as humans, the consensus of police opinion is known to you in the Red Camps. Article written eight years ago. Role playing. In the under underturated schizophrenic comp compared to the distinguished emphatic faculty found in human mental patients and superficially similar but basically the Leningrad psychiatrist Bryant broke in briskly think that a small class of human beings could not pass the blood comp scale if you tested them in line with police work you'd process them as humanoid robots you'd be wrong but then they'd be dead he was silent now waiting for Rick's answer but these individuals Rick said would all be they'd be in institutions by degree they couldn't conceivably function in the outside world they certainly couldn't go undetected with advanced psychotics, unless, of course, their breakdown had come recently and suddenly no one had come around to noticing. But this could happen. A million to one odds, Rick said, but he saw the point. What worried Dave, Brian included, continued, is that this is appearance of the new Nexus 6 advanced type. The frozen organization assured us, as you know, that a Nexus 6 could be delineated by standard profile tests. We took their word for it. Now we're forced, as we knew it would be, to determine it on our own. That's what you'll be doing in Seattle. You understand, don't you, that this could go wrong either way. We can't pick out all the humanoid robots. Then we have no reliable and can't pick out all the human robots, and we have no reliable analytical tool, and we'll never find the ones for actually ex actually escaping. If you scale factors on a human subject, identify as he's man right. Brian Bean minimized the it would be awkward, although no one else would not the frozen people would make the news public. Actually, we'd be able to sit on it indefinitely. Although, of course, we'd have to inform WPO, and they, in turn, will notify Leningrad. Eventually, it'll pop out of the papes at us. But by then, we'll have developed a better scale. I picked up the phone. You want to get started? Use your department car and pull yourself up at our pumps. Standing, Rick said. Can I take Dave? notes with me. I want to read them on the way. Brian said, I was put until you tried your skill in Seattle. His tone was just interestingly merciless, and Rick Deckard noted it. 
When he landed, the police department saw a car on the roof of the Prison Association building in Seattle. He found a young woman waiting for him, black-haired and slender, wearing the huge dust-filtered filtering jackets. She approached his car, her hands deep in the pockets of her brightly striped long coat. She had on her sharply defined small face an expression of sullen distaste. What's the matter? Rick said as he stepped from the parked car. The girl said obliquely, Oh, I don't know. Something about the way we got talked to on the phone. It doesn't matter. Abruptly, she held out her hand. He reflexively took it. I'm Rachel Rosen. I guess you're Mr. Deckard. This is not my idea, he said. Yes, Inspector Bryant told us that. But you're officially the San Diego, the San Francisco Police Department, and it doesn't believe our unit. And it doesn't believe our unit. It's to the pub public benefit. She eyed him from beneath long black lashes, probably artificial. Rick said, a humanoid robot is like any other machine to fluctuate between being a benefit and a hazard very rapidly. As a benefit, it is not our problem. But as a hazard, Rick, Rachel Rosen said, then you come in. Is it true, Mr. Deckard, that you're a bounty hunter? He shrugged with, redu with reluctance. He nodded. You have no difficulty viewing our android as inert, the girl said. You can retire it, as they say. Do you have the group selected for me, he said. I'd like to. He broke off, because all at once he had seen their animals. A powerful corporation, he realized, would of course be able to afford this. In the back of, the mind, of his mind, evidently, he had anticipated such a collection. It was not, it was not surprise that he felt, but more a sort of yearning. He quietly walked away from the girl toward the closet, the closet the closest pen. Already he could smell them, the several scents of the creatures standing or sitting, or in the case of what appeared to be a raccoon, asleep. Never in his life had he personally seen a raccoon. He knew the animal only from 3D films shown on television. For some reason, the dust had struck the species almost as hard as it had the birds, of which only almost none survived now. In an automatic response, he brought out his much thumb Sydney's and looked up raccoon in all the sub sublistings. The list prices naturally appeared in italics. Like Pershon, horses non existed on the market for sale in any figure. Sydney's catalog sent the price at which the last transaction involving Raccoon had taken place. It was astronomical. His name is Bill, the girl said from behind him. Bill the Raccoon. We acquired him just last year from a subsidiary, subsidiary corporation. She pointed past him, and he was then uh, perceived. Then he then perceived the armed company guards standing with their machine guns, the rapid fire like little light Skoda issue. The eyes of the guards had been fastened on him since his car landed, and he thought, "My car is clearly marked as a police vehicle." and surplus capital on living animals. Look at the owl, Rachel Rosen said. Here, I'll, I'll wake it up for you. He started toward a small, distant cage in the center of which jutted a branching dead tree. There are no owls, he started to say. 
or so we've been told. Sydney C. Thought. They listed in their catalog as extinct. The tiny, precise type. The E against again and again throughout the catalog. As the girl walked ahead of him, he checked to see, and he was right. Sydney's never makes a mistake, he said to himself. We know that too. What else can we depend on? It's artificial, he said. The civilization is disappointed, built up keen and intense. No, she smiled, and he saw that she, she had small, even teeth, as wide as her eyes and hair. And eyes and her hair were black. But Sydney's listing, he said, trying to show her the catalog to prove it to her. The girl said, We don't buy from Sydney's or any other animal dealer. Our purchases are from private parties. And the prices we pay aren't reported, she added. Also, also, we have our own naturalists. They're working up in Canada. There's still a good deal of forest left, comparatively speaking, anyhow. Enough for small birds and ones in a while. Enough for small animals and ones in a while. A bird. For a long time, he stood gazing at the owl, who dozed on its perch. A thousand thoughts came into his mind. Thoughts about the world. Thoughts about the days when owls had fallen from the sky. He remembered in his childhood. Remembered how in his childhood it had been discovered that species upon species had become extinct and how the papes had reported it each day. Foxes one morning, badgers the next. Until people had stopped reading the perpetual bits. He thought too about his need for real animal, but within him an actual hatred once more manifested itself towards his electric sheep, which he had to tend, had to care about as if it lived. The tyranny of an object, he thought. It doesn't know I exist. Like the androids, it has no ability to appreciate the existence of Just 
Well, Bonka's overcoat. She did not look back, and he hesitated for a moment, feeling annoyance before he at last trailed after her. What have you got against me? She asked. She asked her as together they descended. She reflected as if up to now she had not. Well, she said, you're a little police department employee. You little employee, police department employee, you're in a unique position. You know what I mean. She keep in the mouthless, filled sidewalk glance. How much of your current outlay, you ask, is this a type equipped with the Nexus 6? Your police department can't do an adequate job in the simple matter of protecting the physical number of my six sixes who bought. A man dapper and lean and elderly approached them and extended his face a harried expression which showed it as if everything was nearly gonna happen too fast. I'm Elton Rosen, he explained to Rick as they shook hands. Listen, Dr. you realize we don't manufacture anything here on It's not that we don't want to or intend to cooperate with you. Anyhow, I've done the best I can. His left hand shakily wrote his thing here. Indicating his department briefcase said, I'm ready to start. The senior Rosen's nurse has buoyed up his own confidence. You're afraid to be utilized at the start. Rachel Rosen included. I can probably force them to abandon the manufacture of their next six types. During the next hour, affect the structure of their operation. I could conceivably determine the future of the Rosenkorn Association here in the United States, in Russia, and on Mars. The two members of the Rosen family studied him apprehensively, and he felt the hollowness of their manner. By coming here, he had brought the void to them, had ushered in emptiness and the hush of the epidemic death. Thank you. 
of silence, Elton Rosen said merely, Look, officer, has it been a possible policy to salute parents? I'm not a peace officer. Rick said, I'm a bounty hunter. From his open suitcase, he fished out the void gum apparatus, sealed himself, seated himself at a nearby rosewood coffee table, and began to assemble the rather simple. Instruments. You may send in the first ST and he informed Elton Rosen, who looked more haggard than ever. I'd like to watch, Rachel said, also seeing herself. I've never seen an empty desk being administered. What do those things you have here measure? Rick said, This. He held up the flat of his adhesive disc with its trailing wires. Measures capillary. In the facial area, we know this to be a primary automatic response, a so called shame or blushing reaction to the morally shocking stimulus. It can't be controlled voluntary, involuntarily. As skin conductivity, respiration, as can skin conductivity, respiration, and cardiac. He showed her the electric spin of pencil beam light. This records fluctuations of tension. Simultaneous with the blush phenomenon, there generally can be found a small but detectable nerve, and these can be found in androids. They're not engendered by the stimuli questions now, although biologically they exist potentially. Rachel said, Give me the test. Why? Rick said, puzzled. Speaking up, Ultimate was said, or you selected her as your first subject. She may be an android. We're hoping you can tell. He sees himself in a series of clumsy 